a lot of people have been asking questions around the Azeron keyboards and which one's better for what scenario, you know, depending on your gameplay and all of that fun stuff. So this is going to be a really short and sweet one where we just kind of chat through uh, what the differences are and then maybe some trade-offs on like why you would choose one over the other. So from left to right here, we have the Azeron Syro, which is the mouse. So if you look at it, you got the sensor on the bottom. This goes all the way up to 16,000 DPI. Um, and then we'll look at the software in a second. So just bear with me. We're, we're going to actually look at what these look like in the software and how to kind of maneuver through what we can expect. So right here on the handle, we have 20 mappable buttons. So your hand kind of sits in here like that. So if you're looking at the top and then it sits on the desk, um, it is wired only, but it sits on the desk. It's a thousand um, polling rate and you move around kind of like in old school, kind of like Atari situation. You do have a thumbstick. So we have a thumbstick here. We have a D-pad right here as well. So thumbstick, D-pad, and then the buttons are literally just kind of like right in front of you. So you pull down like, like a trigger. So if you're playing a first person, third person shooter, uh, you you actually are kind of holding it almost like a weapon itself. Uh, very comfortable. Uh, I will say that it does raise your hand up a bit. So you have to be cautious of that. But this device specifically was made to be a one handed mouse. Right. So for anyone that had that question, I know someone, uh, one of the people over on red made a comment around them actually being one handed. And if you are one-handed or you have some type of um, handicap that kind of forces you to just be more dominant on one side, you can get this on either hand. So you can get this on right hand, left hand, and it does allow you to basically have an all-in-one uh, device for gaming if you have access to at least one hand. Then you have, again, 20 mappable buttons for really any use case that you you would need, right? 20 mappable buttons right here. They're really reachable. All of this is movable. It comes with, all of these come with a special little screwdriver. It's really simple. They're, all of it is pre, pre-installed and then you just kind of like tweak it as you see fit. Um, but really ergonomic handle. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is a strap and they, they send uh, extra ones, but ergonomic handle kind of fits right to your palm. So it's really comfortable. And then you just wrap this around and then that way you can kind of move around and, you know, flick and, and all of that stuff. So that is the Azeron Syro. So this is what, what this looks like. Again, if it's one, if you're a one handed or honestly, if you just want a different kind of gaming experience when it comes to your mouse, I, I will say that when I'm doing heavy competitive gaming, so if I'm like playing frag punk, if I'm playing Marvel rivals, if I'm playing any type of like hardcore ranked mode, it's not going to beat out a traditional mouse at least not without substantial playing, spending a substantial amount of time actually practicing with it. I have not done that. So I'm just giving you my account that I all, I do swap over to a traditional mouse. My mouse is right over here. I try swap over to my mouse whenever I'm doing like a competitive game. But for most games, why do I use this? I use this in collaboration with my main keyboard um, because it's just comfortable and it gives me a lot more maneuverability and a lot more options when it comes to the buttons that I can uh, map out. So when I'm playing like Monster Hunter, when I'm playing um, RPGs or MMOs, anything that requires a, a lot of buttons, a lot of macros, a lot of different things, this is a, an amazing addition on top of a mouse. Otherwise, you'd have to get one of those mouses that have a bunch of buttons and then you're just trying to remember what small little position you have your thumb in in order to to trigger what button or whatever. So just something to consider. So that's that's what this mouse is. Uh, the second one we have here is the traditional Azeron Compact. So this is the first version. This is the first actual one that I ever got. <laughs> so this is, it has an analog. It has the the D-pad as well, like, uh, like uh, the other ones. And then this has 29 mappable buttons. So all of these, so your hand just literally, your hand just sits in here. And I know if it, it looks a little weird, but I promise you it's, it's actually really, really simple to kind of figure out. 
29 mappable buttons, analog stick, um, D-pad, and you can, again, like I mentioned, it comes with the screwdriver, so you, all of this comes pre-structured, and you just loosen it, and then you can kind of move these, depending on how large your hand is, how small your hand is, you can bring these, you can, you can bring these up or down, and then spread the fingers, you can spread them out, bring them closer together, depending on what the most comfortable position is. You can get this palm rest in a flat or a curved. I prefer the curved because it fits more of a traditional, like the traditional way that your hand would naturally fit in here. So I'm I'm always going to go curved, but you, you know, do whatever makes you feel most comfortable. So those are the, the two. We're going to move this one out of the way because I've already done a video, a full video on the differences between the version one and the version two. Everything else that we're going to be talking about, these two right here, our version two. So we're going to say bye-bye to version one, and then we're going to bring this up. So for now for these two, right? And I might need to disconnect that for a second. All right. This is the, the number one question I get asked is, should I go with the Azeron Cyborg or the Compact? But if you're deciding between the Azeron Cyborg and the Compact, the real key difference is just these top buttons, right? So for the traditional Cyborg, you're going to notice if I turn it sideways here, the top comes up and over your finger. So if my hand is in there, in order to uh, press the button that's assigned for the top button, I'm just pushing up on my finger. Uh, in a different view here, if my hand was in here, I'm just push pulling up, right? All you're going to do is kind of flick up. And to be honest, it, it seems a little weird, um, especially because we're used to pushing down on buttons. And that's why they, they came up with the compact version. So the compact version is literally the only difference is the top. If I turn it sideways, you see the top is kind of missing. And instead, they just put the button right there. So... Instead of having to flick up, you're, you're just going to come up and push down. Now, arguably, you can argue that that's technically an additional step because you're coming up and then down. So there is a little bit of more latency when you're using that kind of mechanic versus a cyborg, a traditional cyborg where you're just kind of flicking up and you don't have to think about much else. It's just one little movement. Uh, that being said, you want to be careful what you assign to these buttons anyway. Usually I'm assigning like the map or something to these buttons. They aren't critical buttons for my, my main gameplay. All of my main gameplay um, is here in the center um, where my uh, index finger um, and my middle finger are really controlling most of the gameplay because each of these have um, roughly, what? let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Each of these have five buttons, not including that top one. So the, and the index finger has, has a sixth one on the side here. All right. So if you're looking from the top down, this is what I'm talking about. You have pushing up, pushing in, pulling, another pulling, and then the one on the side. So for the index, you got six. For everyone else, you have five, not including this one up here. So technically, if you're including the top ones, each button has um, six and the index has seven. Index and pinky have seven. So that's really what it comes down to if you're deciding on, on these two. If you're deciding which one should I get, it comes down to are you comfortable with pushing up or coming up and then pushing down. I like the concept of pushing down, but again, I don't map these to anything that's really important anyway. Like if I'm playing Frag Punk, if I'm playing Marvel Rivals, I'm mapping this to pull up the stats or something like that. So, or change my character or something like that. I'm not going to map it to something like picking things up or switching my gun or anything like that. I'm not going to map it to anything this mission critical because then it could become problematic. For I'll switch over to the software right here. So if you see the software on the screen, this is actually what's connected right now is the Cyro. I'll connect the other one as well. So we can look at both of the softwares next to each other. Um, so let me, let me plug this one into... Yeah, yeah. So the software here, you can, I have the joystick turned off, but it, the moment you plug it in and the software is completely free, you can just click on devices and you see I have both of mine as options right here. I have the Cyro, which is currently selected, and then the Cyborg for V2, which is the keyboard that we were looking at before. But when you're, when you're in here and you're looking at, 
how you want to map it out, you can see I have all of my profiles here. The, if you have the, the actual software open, you can have an unlimited amount of profiles. Like look at all these profiles I have for different games. Now I will, I will add the caveat that if you are using two devices, so sometimes I use the keyboard as my main input and then I use the mouse as a mouse with additional inputs. If you're doing that, you do need to have two completely separate um, profiles for the same game. And I would name one, as you can see, it says like Monster Hunter Cyro, TFD Cyro, Fragpunk Cyro. And then if I pop over to the Cyborg, it'll be just the, the name of the game without the Cyro aspect to it. But all you have to do to map any of these is super simple, like most software, to be honest. You just click right here. It's going to give you a bunch of options. If you want this to be a keyboard input, if you want this to be a mouse input, so you can make any of these buttons, a right click, left click, click, middle click, or the side to side, you know, that the kind of side side buttons when you're moving the mouse wheel to the side, you can al align any of these to any button to that. You can make any button, a joystick, thumbstick, uh, mouse wheel, which is different. So this is how... I account for the fact that the mouse wheel on the device is actually just pretty lackluster. So what I end up doing is I end up coming in here and assigning the D-pad. I'm going to go to a, a completely new profile here. Let me, I'm just going to copy a blank profile and I'm going to come down here. So I'm going to come down here to this blank profile and I'm just going to delete all of these. So right here, if I wanted to make my D-pad, which the D-pad let me uh, go to the top down again. So the D-pad, here's your, your thumbstick, and then the D-pad is right here. So if I wanted to make the D-pad a mouse wheel, then I would go to the up one, select it, and then go to mouse wheel, and then just push up on vertical. And you just need to do one, right? Push up. This is what I do for Monster Hunter, by the way. So I do push up on vertical, apply, apply and then step go out and you'll see wheel up and then you do the same thing for the opposite right you go mouse wheel and then you do negative one it already showed up because i just clicked the opposite right here i'm going to click on this one mouse wheel let's see if it uh, applies it doesn't apply all right so we're going to click on this we're going to go hor horizontal negative one and then that'll be um oh that's wrong a negative one is going to be is going to be left. All right. So we're going to do positive one. And then it'll be wheel right. I love that it automatically knows what you're trying to do. And it automatically will give you that, that indicator, right? So now, if I were go would go were go were to go into the game, when I press up on the D pad, it will, you see it light up, it would just that it just transfers as a wheel up. So if you assign that to switch your weapon, then that is going to switch your weapon. If you assign that to sprint, then that'll be sprint. Is assign it to whatever you can do whatever. Now, I you also have um, all of these other buttons. Like I said, there's aside from these, there's 15 additional buttons that you can align to whatever you want. You have the obviously your right click, left click, and then you can do. Any, anything that your heart desires. It's very, very easy. You guys can get um, a discount if you use code DGM at checkout. Thanks for, for everyone that um, stopped by for this one. I will be swapping over to playing some Frag Punk in a bit, but I wanted to just drop this line here for anyone that had any questions around the Cyborg versus the um, Compact versus the um, Azeron Cyro. Appreciate y'all. See y'all in the next one.